Hi, Jennifer. So very, very pretty horse. And you're right. He is very much on the trotty side. So some horses are naturally round. He's definitely round. His whole body is round. And so when he carries his head very nicely, his spine, so his neck and his back in here is all rounding out. And everything's making him go more towards that uh, fox trot and trot. So let's first just talk about your body position. So pretty rider, you sit up tall, you look where you're going. So I know you've had some lessons. What I would try to do, if at all possible, is see if you can move your saddle back a little bit. It looks a little forward, but that might be the saddle pad. But still, if we can get you back just even a little bit more, it'll get more weight on his hind end. And that also might help so he's not so trotty. Even though he has a pretty head carriage here, I'm going to have you try and keep his head just a little bit higher. And the hard part is if you hold your hands up, the horse will usually pick its head up and then it puts it back down. So what we want to try to do is kind of keep popping his head up here and there to try to keep it just a little bit higher to see if we can invert his back some. And since he's so trotty, the other thing we can try is if you have saddlebags, I would put saddlebags back here and put some water bottles in them. It'll add a little bit more weight and that might also help us to get him more lateral. And then in time, we'll take that off once he's conditioned and holding his gait better. But those are just a couple of things that we can do to try to help him to gait more. When you're riding him, sit back as far as you can and really think about sitting back on your seat pockets. Think of kind of tucking your, your buttocks underneath yourself and lean him back a little bit more because when they're so trotty like this, we want to try and get as much weight back as we can until we get him carrying his gait and staying in his gait well, and then we can slowly go back to neutral. But right now we're trying to help him so he's not so much on the trotty side. So this is his flat walk right here. Let me so that's your flat walk. And his head carriage is pretty good. You, now you're gonna see the top of his head is kind of towards your chest. I would like to keep that up. And like right there, he's fine for the flat walk. But as you're trying to get more speed in your flat walk, I wouldn't frame him up. I would keep his head up where it was and keep his nose out a little bit. Because if, as you're riding, you try to chuck that nose in, it's going to arch his neck, he's going to round his back more, and he's going to go a little bit more towards that fox trot again. So I want you to think, you can have his head up or, so you can try that, but you can also try going on a little bit longer rein and see if he'll stretch and his, his back and his neck out so he's not so collected. And you can see if that helps. So you can see which one helps, either bringing his head up or letting him stretch out and lengthen his stride a little bit more. But right there is pretty good. Even though his head's high, I like it because he's on the trotty side. But I would have you lean back a little bit more. It's going to feel like you're kind of leaning back against the couch. So bring your upper body back here. Kind of tuck your buttocks underneath you. And actually push your leg just a little bit forward to help push you back in the saddle. Because that way you can push on the stirrups. So it's called a chair seat. And it doesn't look real pretty in the beginning. But we're doing what we need to, to try to help him to gait, okay? So let's see where we go from here. So that's your flat walk. Now with him, any arena work I would do ahead of time just at a very slow walk. So I would do your circles, your leg yield, your serpentine, get them really nice and supple. And then when you go to the flat walk, just go around the arena like you're going and then try to keep the same speed. So I would try to keep his same speed of the flat walk for about five minutes each direction. And I wouldn't do any poles at all because the poles and circles will make him actually trottier. So there you're keeping the same rhythm pretty well. And again, his head is fine. He's nice and relaxed. He's not over tucked or anything there. Now 
there. Now, as he goes downhill, downhill will make them a little bit more lateral, but it won't if his head is tucked down because some of the trotty horses will kind of compensate for it. So I want you to keep his head up as you're going down the hill. I'm going to rewind it for a minute. So let's try it again. So right there, he starts going more lateral and he starts swinging more, but I want you to be very aware of where his head is. So his head's up and I want you to, again, to lean back a little bit more, put those feet out in front of you a little bit, get your upper body back. And that way you'll be able to get more speed as he's going down the hill. So there he's still a little bit lateral and that was more towards a running walk right there. Okay, because he is going faster. He just doesn't have a lot of speed. Now he starts speeding up. It's hard because that people keeps moving around. And he starts going more towards that fox trot. So if you watch his legs, you'll see he's got more diagonal pairs. And then you start doing that little bounce in the saddle. So what I would do is work the flat walk, stay that same speed for five minutes each direction. Then you can take a break. Then you're gonna start walking faster, but you're gonna try and stay at that running walk that you were kind of doing down the hill. And then you started doing on the flat and then it changed because he went past that speed. So the hardest part is feeling it and not letting him go past it. Because right now, instead of having his running walk go faster, he just goes, oh, if you wanna go faster, I'll do that foxtrot. That's pretty easy for me because I'm trotty. So if you want that running walk and you want that back and forth motion more than the up and down motion, we need to work more at that speed. So you're gonna, when you're trying to get his running walk, you know, you can start it as you're going down the hill after you've done your flat walk. And then try and keep pushing your seat back and forth like you're kind of pumping on a swing to try to get him into your rhythm. Keep his head up and every time you feel him getting a little trotty and you feel that little soft bounce in the saddle. Lean back more, put that feet out in front of you, tuck your, your hind end underneath you and kind of try to pop your rein up to keep his head up and just half halt to get him back in that speed. So let's see where he goes from here. Sorry, it's hard to see with the Pivo sometimes it's so not bad there, but where his head is, is quite good. So you want to memorize things like that. Like he was doing a running walk pretty well, and I had his head up. So I would keep the top of his head level with your chest. Because right there, he's going pretty good. Now he starts bringing it down, and he immediately starts going more trotty. Because you'll see that V, I'm going to try and stop it. See that V in his legs? So you're going to see that V when they're going more towards that uh, trotty side of the gated spectrum. So as long as you feel that back and forth motion, you're okay. Every time you feel that soft bounce up and down into the foxtrot, I would half halt, raise his head up, sit back, and slow him down a little bit. So here comes your downhill again. Now there he got a little bit more trotty, okay? So I would keep that head up. But again, sometimes I see you lengthen your rein a little bit and it looks like he starts to relax his back. So that might help as well. But when he gets framed up and collected, which looks very pretty, the hard part is then he goes more towards that fox trot when his head's kind of tucked in and he's arched here. So I'd try to keep his head up a little bit and then also get him not to over arch it as much because then we're going more towards that fox trot. So I would practice your flat walk for five minutes each direction, give him a break. Then I would try to go for your running walk five minutes each direction, okay? And then I would just stick with those. I wouldn't practice the foxtrot at all because he does that very well. And what we're trying to do is over time, get him to go faster in his flat walk and his running walk. But if we always let him go up to that foxtrot, he'll never get faster because he just does a different gait instead. So again, we want him to keep that head a little bit higher to kind of lengthen his back and his neck 
because he's getting too collected and that's why he's going towards the trot. And then we're trying to get all of your weight more back here to help him not be so trotty. Even that is, if you don't normally like walk around in the beginning and warm up, I would walk around on a loose rein and just kind of let him stretch and get that head down like he just did there a minute ago. So let's watch it again. So that's better, letting him stretch. And I would let him stretch in between the flat walk and the running walk. See, there he looks more neutral and relaxed, and he's doing better with his legs. Even though we're slower, they're not as separated. So the Separated. So the trotty ones get their legs almost too separated, and that's how they end up going towards the trot. Okay, and this is better. There he's going, you start to go downhill again. But you'll see, if you watch his head and neck, he's not collected, and look what's happening with his legs. He's getting more lateral. So I think that's much better from what I can see, is keeping the head up, but keeping him longer in the neck, keeping this more relaxed and not over arched and you staying back and then pushing a little bit for speed every time you go down that hill. And then as you get to the flat, if you feel him changing and going towards that trot, I would slow him down, but then try to raise his head up, but get it longer again and not so arched. Now with his canter, this might help us. So he gets a little bit more lateral in his canter. If you watch these legs on the left-hand side, you'll see they're almost moving together, okay? And that would help us because we want to get your horse a little bit more lateral. So another thing we could try too is as we're trying to get more speed for that running walk or if we're not getting hit is cantering him. And then when you're getting to the part that goes downhill, start slowing him down back into a gate, bring that head up and then try to see if you can lengthen his neck a little bit and add a little leg and see what happens. So he might go lateral and you might actually get a rack from that. But you could try doing canter gate transitions, but again, don't frame him up too much when you come back to the gate. You wanna to try to lengthen him, make him a little bit more lateral by kind of inverting everything and making this longer instead of shortening it with the collection. So there, see, he's almost going lateral with his legs, but there we're bringing his head down, which is fine for the canter, but when we're trying to use the canter to help us into gait. So he did just right as you were breaking down into the next speed, he did get lateral for just a step. And there you actually have a good gait. Okay, so that's better and he's not over arch. So that's more your running walk now. So you could do canter running walk transitions and just keep trying to get it faster. When he does it right, you can stop him, give him a break or stop and give him a treat. So he understands that's what you're trying to get and then just keep repeating it. But that's a pretty good running walk there. And then as you're going downhill, that's definitely making him lateral. So try not to get his head tucked in too much and try not to put too much arch in his neck. It's hard because if you did dressage, which I did, oh, we all want that and it looks so pretty. But when we're trying to get gait, sometimes we have to do some weird things to just try to help them to get it and then to get them faster, okay? I would think with him, when we try to get the rack, that you could try to get it from the canner. But with him, I would try to get his head up and he still might be trotty. And then I would try to turn his head a little sideways. I'd try to turn it to the left and push him with my left leg. Like on that video I was talking about, the video with Disco. Watch that because you'll see when he went to the left, he was very trotty. And then I kind of popped his head up and pushed him over and he immediately went lateral and started doing like a saddle gait. So you could try the same with him and see if it works. It might. 
if it doesn't, you know, and you turn your, their head one way, like to the left, then you can always try and turn their head the other way to the right. But with some horses, just bringing their head up doesn't always fix it. Sometimes you got to push them a little bit sideways and turn that head sideways, and that all of a sudden will convert them into a lateral gait. Bring his head up. Now he's still trotting, isn't he? So I'm going to push him over. And all I did was just push him sideways. But if I didn't know how to ride and push him sideways, I would have just kept trotting. So those are some of the cues they taught him to go lateral with his legs instead of the trot. But see his head, it's up above the horn. And it's hard for me to watch because the pivot keeps going in and out. But it was your running walk. There is getting a little bit more on the trotty side. So again, bring his head up, take the arch out, sit back more, push your legs a little bit more forward, and lean back with your upper body. Now that time he got trotty going down the hill instead of lateral, and that can happen. So if that happens, you want to slow it way down. You don't want to keep going because then they're going to get just you know, once they hit that trot, they're going to stick in that trot with that footfall. Now, I want you to see something. As he's walking and he's more relaxed, watch his legs. So he's more lateral. He's not diagonal there, okay? So he's shown you the little secrets, like this is how you get my gait. Watch what I'm doing. So he's more relaxed. He's not overly rounded and he's much more lateral there and you might be there and you might be going downhill. It's hard for me to see, but all those things that's what he's telling you. This is the frame that's going to get me to do that gate if you want that. So you always try to pay attention to what their legs are doing, where you are in the arena, and what kind of frame they're in. Because each horse is a little bit different. But with him, as soon as then you sped up, he starts going towards that trotty side again. I got to skip forward because it's bugging my eyes. <laughs> but now here as you're going, you kind of, it looks like you're trying to hold his head up possibly. You know, I'm guessing because I can't talk to you. But now as you go down the hill, there he's getting trotty instead of lateral, but his neck doesn't look as relaxed and it looks like you're kind of having more contact on him. So he might be a little bit better with less contact. And if you kind of pop his head up instead of holding it up, sometimes when you pop it up, that immediately inverts their back and they'll convert over to lateral instead of that diagonal. Okay, gate. so it happened here again, as you were starting to relax more, you kind of went to one hand, you're scratching or something. He actually got better. So right here, he's not, he's more towards the, tr you know, trotty side or fox trot. And now right there, as you're itching, you let go of the rein, you were looser and more relaxed. And then he got lateral again, right before you stop. As you're going here again, and you're going downhill, you still have contact and he's still kind of staying more on that fox trotty side. So again, I would try to ride with even a lighter hand or a little bit of a loopy rein and see how he does. Because again, at least each time you relax and you're starting to come down, he gets a little bit more lateral and looks better. Now here, as you're going, it was pretty good, but you're kind of right on the verge of getting a fox trot. okay? You are moving back and forth in the saddle. You're not getting that up and down. But then as he gets faster, then you start getting that more up and down. So with him, what you're trying to do is get the footfall and the relaxation. Don't go for the speed. Because if you go for speed, he immediately starts going into that fox trot, okay? Okay, so I'm just going to summarize it again. So again, I'd try to put your saddle back a little bit farther, if at all possible. I would have your upper body back a little bit more. Make sure you're kind of tucking your hind end underneath you. Push your leg a little forward so it can help push you back. And again, you can add saddle bags and see if that 
helps with water bottles because sometimes just getting that weight back there will help them. And then over time, if that did help you, then over time, of course, drink the water and start getting the water bottles out of there as he is getting stronger. Keep his head a little bit higher than it is right here, like chest level, but make sure his neck is somewhat straight and doesn't have that arch in it and you're trying to get his back inverted a little bit. Anytime he's good, he starts going faster, he's relaxed and you feel he's lateral because you're moving back and forth in the saddle. Stop, give him a break, reward him a lot in the beginning or give treats and they'll pick it up quite fast. So they will pick it up much faster. Like, oh, I get a treat if they do that. And then all of a sudden, sometimes they just start gating nonstop. So, and he is gating. It's just that he's doing more foxtrot than a running walk. So you're trying to do that and then you're trying to condition him and you're trying to stay out of the foxtrot for now. You just want to flat walk and do that running walk and then you could canter. And then after the canter, you could practice some more uh, running walk if you want. Again, trying to come out of the canter, do a downward transition, and maybe do it on the down part of your arena might help him to get more lateral. And then if you get a more lateral gait, your running walk or a saddle gait, and he's pretty smooth and it's not a foxtrot, you know, go a couple steps or so, then stop him and reward him, and then just keep repeating it. So you too could do canter transitions down. That might help them. And then again, keeping that head up about chest level. And then as you're going, if he's getting trotty to kind of pop his head up and then actually turn his head a little bit to the side, like bend it to the left and dig in a little bit with that left leg. And if that doesn't work, you can try bending him a little to the right as you're going straight. You're bending him to the right and then try to um, push him off of your right leg as well. So he's a very nice horse. I think he's just gotten a little bit too trotty, but I think we're going to be able to get him out of it. I think your bit and all of that, the rest of it looks good. I'm just trying to give you some hints to see if we can get him better. But every time you kind of relaxed and he straightened out and dropped his head out and kind of poked his nose, he looked like he was getting more lateral. So just remember that as you're riding him, try not to collect him much at all. He looks like he goes better and he's less trotty when he's not collected so much. Bring his head up. Now he's still trotting, isn't he? So I'm going to push him over. And all I did was just push him sideways. But if I didn't know how to ride and push him sideways, I would have just kept trotting. So those are some of the cues they taught him to go lateral with his legs instead of the trot. But see his head, it's up above the horn.